herb. Herb is a plant. I mean, herbs are good for everything. Welcome to Gene Cannabis TV. We got Dank on this side, on this side, and we got Jeremy on my to my right. Appreciate you coming in, Jeremy, and our our Jeremy, a social commentator, and uh, com uh, uh, giving his uh, views also. Also, uh, Jeremy is a medical marijuana patient. Uh, I'm not. I'm a caregiver, but not a patient. So you're a, you're a patient. So uh, anyway, we can talk about uh, some authority on that subject. Uh, right now, I want to talk about Dan Bo, my friend Dan Bo. I've mentioned a little bit in the past, and I haven't gotten into much detail. We're running short on time, but so let me talk about that for a little bit. Uh, his court date is coming up on November 19th. Uh, I don't know the time yet, but uh, it probably be 9, 10 in the morning. Uh, but uh, I asked him to send me a short bio, and he did. He didn't, he didn't quite what I had in mind. I, I wanted a more information on his court cases, but I've been to about half of them, so... Uh, between what I know and what I have here, it, it is, uh, we do have some good information. But his bio, he talks about in 1971, he first tried cannabis. And he said, I was hardwired for a long life beneficial relationship with cannabis. <laughs> uh, in 1989, he found out that, uh, that there were 50,000 other uses of cannabis and that prohibition is based on nothing more than lies. Also about this time, he was introduced to sovereignty where he where uh, he, saying, he said, uh, we as individuals are supposed to have full charge and responsibility for our lives. In other words, we are to be free with government off our backs as long as we do no harm to others, nor to their property. Freedom versus communism, communism or individual versus collective. 1995 and 2001, cannabis prohibition invaded my beneficial relationship with cannabis and ended with felony charges. These felony convictions forced further study into sovereignty, but all arguments in line with no victim, no crime went nowhere. A side note here, what he's talking about is he's had several uh, cases to where he was uh, caught growing uh, and uh, distri distribution charges. Uh, he's constantly uh, one of the, one of the sovereignty uh, thing, didn't refuse to participate and uh, was convicted. Uh, 2010, the current matter, this is the federal charges that he's up on uh, for now and that we're talking about uh, going to see, uh, going to his court hearing on the 19th of November. More cannabis charges and now an armed career, uh, armed career criminal charge, 15 year mandatory minimum. Uh, the, the reason for this was is he had, uh, he had weapons when they, he caught, was caught this last time growing. Uh, this was, has inspired more research that has brought me to this conclusion. Our society operates on a dishonest money system without any weights and measure and went back bankrupt in 1933. Therefore, we are considered debtors without any of our annable rights. But this is an inconstable fraud foisted upon us. See, they own it all, including you, at the website www.newpeopleorder.com. If we, are a government, if we are a government of the people, for the people, and by the people, I need your presence in the Eugene Federal Courthouse in Judge Aiken's room November 19th. <clears throat> it's in 95, he said, I was inspired at 4.20 a.m. on 4.20, uh, 1995, to write a gift from God, a plant for the planet Earth. So, anyway, and the note I wrote at the bottom here is that... Uh, I, Danville is the greatest man I've ever seen. He walks his talk. Some criticize him for his beliefs, or more, per, more precisely, his actions due to his beliefs. I followed his journey through most of his court encounters, and everyone has an, and everyone has been an experience I'll never forget. This is a prime example of the need for people to learn of jury nullification. I'm going to be a character witness, which is an honor for me, but the downside is I won't be able to attend the trial other than when I testify. And so anyway, that's a uh, thing about Dan Bo, our friend uh, Dan, with Daniel Carl Ernst. That's uh, November 19th at the Federal Courthouse, the new Federal Courthouse, the ugly one, <laughs> at 405 East 8th. 
and that's uh, again Tuesday on the 19th. So now we're going to the headlines here, and uh, Jeremy, you want to start off the first headline, and I'll take the second story. The next states to legalize marijuana. It, if you like to wager, Alaska, Oregon, and Rhode Island look like the best bets for legalizing marijuana next year. But the situation is fluid, and there could be others. That's right, and this is uh, from the Stop the War Drug Headlines, uh, and uh, dated 10 31 uh, 2013. Uh, the website is stop the This is uh, we read these every week, and I always uh, recommend people to go to that website and sign up for their email. I mean, excuse me, their news uh, headline, and it'll be sent to you weekly. So the second story is Oregon Marijuana Legalization Initiative filed, and I read that story in full. This is by Philip Smith, uh, who we spoke to of in the past. It says, last Friday, Oregon activists organized as the New Approach Oregon Political Action Committee filed a marijuana legalization initiative with the Secretary of State's office. Unlike the initiatives filed this year by Paul Stanford, author of 2012's Failed Measure 80 Legalization Initiative, this one has picked up the backing of deep-pocketed donors. Last month, the new initiative picked up contributions of 32000 from progressive insurance owner and marijuana law reform funder Peter Lewis and $50,000 from Drug, Action, Drug Policy Action, the lobbying arm of the Drug Policy Alliance. The Secretary of State's office reports. Since the spring, the effort has also received 38,500 in cash contributions from the American Victory Coalition, an Oregon-based federal nonprofit that opposes the war on drugs, among other issues. Oregon has been widely toted as one of the states most likely to join Colorado and Washington in having legalized marijuana in the ballot box. This new initiative was brought apart within the state's activist community and financial support from major outside donor increases the likelihood that Oregon will indeed free the weed in 2014. So uh, next segment, uh, Eric and I will be talking about that in more detail. So uh, you want to read that third story there now? First, <coughs> first conference glimpses, some initial videos from the big conference including in Harvey Rep App, Jared Polis, Ethan Nadelman, Reverend Sanders, and short highlights piece from the first day. Yep, and then there's another story. Uh, uh, again, these are headlines, so if you go to the website, you can get the full story on these. Uh, Florida Supreme Court sets marijuana, medical marijuana hearing date. The Florida Supreme Court will hear arguments in December on whether a medical marijuana initiative can move forward. Medical marijuana update. A Michigan couple get their child back. New Jersey gets its second dispensary. In Washington, regulators get an earful over attempts to do away with patient home grows under I-502 legalization and much, much more. In Indiana, school kid bitten by a drug dog in a fake raid. Police trying to teach children about drug awareness inadvertently taught them an entirely different lesson in Indiana in, in Indiana last week. So that's uh, the, another result of the drug war. Again, that's StopTheDrugWar.org, a great organization and, and a good source of information. <clears throat> so on the next story, this is a local story out of, uh, this is from SalemNews.com, written by Bonnie King. Uh, he's written a lot of excellent articles, and uh, Dr. Uh, Phil Levesque, an old uh, friend of ours and, and uh, a hero of our movement, uh, <coughs> was uh, uh, in the seminar. It was in, uh, hosted in, uh, you know, they host, they were hosting Phil, Dr. Phil Levesque. Dr. Levesque spoke to a group of medical marijuana enthusiasts Sunday in Portland. This gathering was part of the Portlandster Dam University curriculum. They provide the unique opportunity for the public to attend classes that teach the A to Z's of medical marijuana, with or without an Oregon medical marijuana permit. Of course, those, of course, those without a permit are not allowed to touch during the hands-on labs. 
The two-day seminar was held at the Monarch Hotel near Klamath Town Center and is, and is a regularly scheduled event created to educate those interested in the fast-growing cannabis business industry. Many people have been growing marijuana for their own consumption in their closets, bathroom, and back porches forever. Now that cultivation has emerged from that veritable closet and into the mainstream, it is possible to go, to direct, to go direct to the source and learn from the masters in the field. Dr. Levesque, a professor of pharmacology and a forensic to toxicologist, gave the audience an interesting lesson they shouldn't soon forget. He started with the 100 legal activities that are more dangerous than smoking pot and also shared a treasure trove called Granny Storm Crows List. Granny Storm Crows List is nearly a book in length and details all the illnesses and, tre and diseases treatable with cannabis. Dr. Levesque and other marijuana doctors look at her list with special reverence for accuracy and the sheer dedication put into the depth of documentation. So, side note, we're going to be looking into that here. None of us have heard of that reference, and so we're going to definitely be looking into that. It goes on to say, the information that Dr. Levesque shared with students comes from decades of years of real experience, hosted by Stony Grove Gardens, an award-winning cannabis farmer, Portland Mr. Dam chooses professionals to speak to the students that know how to walk the talk, or how to walk the walk. They cover the, uh, they cover the all bases in terms of marijuana do's and don'ts and much more. Portland Mr. Dam is an organization that assists patients, doctors, professionals, organizations, and businesses in the medical marijuana industry and those preparing for the future. This is an industry that has been lit and is quickly making its way around the circle of opportunity. This group educates those that attend so that they do things legally and properly, from politics to pesticides, and learning to grow for multiple patients using established guidelines, learning to breed and establish your own brands, making your own soaps, balms, uh, salves, to creating and opening your own business in the world of medical cannabis. They also provide information on opening a dispensary via the Club Pitbull business model, which is Oregon's largest and oldest association of dispensaries founded in 2008. It's not a franchise, but they help with all steps in starting your business. Dr. Levesque is one of the great line of experts, from activists to scientists, who have spoke to Portland Stern, Portland Stern Dam uh, students. So anyway, that's how uh, it went there on that, and uh, so it's ongoing education. Uh, that's uh, Mike Mullins and uh, uh, Jennifer uh, Valley with of uh, Sony Girl Gardens. So if uh, we'll be letting you know of a thing coming up on that, and you can also do an uh, do an info search uh, on the uh, internet. Portland, that's Portland, Portlandster, uh, Portland. Portlandster Dam University. So, anyway, I appreciate you coming in, uh, coming in today, and, and uh, we'll see you next week. We're going to be uh, coming back for a second segment, so we'll be back. Are you tired of following all the rules? Ready to let loose? Have a little fun? Sounds like you need to get high. And with Narcomex Incorporated, your direct-to-consumer drug trafficking solution, you can. Narcomex values your business. That's why we're your number one supplier of drugs, and you're our number one consumer. These billions can't be wrong. We work hard for your business and have killed not one, not two, but three Mexican police and two journalists just to keep you high with that very joint. Why, our commitment to keeping you supplied has killed over 17,000 people right next door. Traffickers, soldiers, journalists, prosecutors, you name it. We're that passionate about your business. We've even begun to destroy some of your favorite tropical beach destinations. Because if you smoke enough at home, you don't even need a beach. But don't legalize it or grow it at home. Let us do the work for you. Sure, consumers boycotted evil companies, but there's no need to boycott Narcomex Incorporated, your direct-to-consumer drug trafficking solution, also offering heroin, meth, and cocaine. Narcomex Incorporated. Live a little and forget others won't.
Welcome back. We made the second segment. We've got Eric, our friend Eric's with us uh, for the second segment. you got Dank here. So I appreciate you coming in, uh, Eric. And uh, We've been talking about this new initiative that's being filed, and uh, Eric's done some reading on it. And What was it you wanted to input about that? Yeah, the, um, this actually has kind of sprung up fairly recently, kind of um, under a lot of activists' nose. Um, this organization, New Approach Oregon, has submitted a... Uh, initiative uh, with the Secretary of State's office, and this is for a legalization for recreational use. Um, basically, something as a follow-up to the Measure 80 um, initiative that failed in uh, 2012. Um, Anthony Johnson, who is one of the writers and one of the, uh, I believe he's the person who runs New Approach Oregon, uh, was on um, the Russ Belleville show on Friday in Portland, and I tuned in, I believe it was on Friday, and I tuned in to the podcast I, on the internet and I watched it. And a couple of things really alarmed me about this approach and listening on some of the forums about people going back and forth about the pros and the cons. One of the things that I'd like to start off by saying is, is if there's anything we can uh, learn from what happened in Washington, which I personally believe is, is, is a complete train wreck with their legalization um, laws that passed up there, but if there's one thing we can learn from Washington is that we can't just jump on any legalization measure no matter what just because it's legalizing. We have to look at everything and how it's going to move forward. One of the problems I have with this um, initiative that New Approach Oregon has put forth is, one, is the amount of plants that somebody's allowed to have commensurate with the amount of ounces they're allowed to possess. Now, Anthony Johnson explained that the four plant limit isn't intended necessarily for someone to flower four plants out. It's intended for someone to have a, you know, one or two plants in flower, one or two plants in you know, seedlings start just to get it going. Um, what this does do then is it completely eliminates anybody from growing outdoors because as you know, one or two outdoor plants is definitely gonna produce more than eight ounces. Um, one of the problems I have with, with this is uh, during the show, Russ Belleville asked him about this exact question and he really didn't have an answer. Uh, actually, he didn't have any answer for this question, what's someone gonna do if they grow more? Um, because if you're just a recreational user, you can't get rid of it. That's the other aspect of the law. You can't take it to a dispensary. You can't take it to a center. If you wish to grow more than that, you have to get a commercial license and apply to be a commercial grower. Um, one of the problems that scares me about this whole initiative is the one thing that people find as to be one of the more positives, and that's the financial backing of these, um, you know, out of state uh, n national uh, fundraisers for marijuana. Um, one of the things that they said is they would not, they would not back this initiative unless a certain few things were in place. Um, one of the things that many marijuana activists didn't like about the Washington. Um, initiative was that it has a per se DUI law in it. One of the things that Oregon activists, and I'm glad that they did, was argued was against that. However, the one thing that bothers me is that there are still felony charges can still be put in place for individuals who go outside of these limits. Now, mind you, this isn't like one ounce over the limit or even two ounces over the limit. This is double, triple over the limit before we start getting into felony crimes. Um, one of the problems I have, though, is how come these donors will only donate if these types of laws are still in place? For instance, in Washington, these donors wouldn't donate unless there was a per se DUI law. In Oregon, apparently they wouldn't donate unless there was still certain felony charges put in place for people who went over and above the limits. Um, one of the things that people need to understand, and, and this isn't unique to marijuana, this isn't unique to Oregon, but anytime you have any kind of a social movement, any kind of a political movement, you kind of have two different types of people who are involved in this. You've got the activists who have something personally involved. In this instance, you have marijuana activists like you, myself, who are actually you know, patients. And some of us, we just were talking about your friend Danbo, who are in prison right now. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have got people who are basically just political activists. And these a lot of times are students who have graduated. They've got their eye on a political career. And a lot of times they just attach themselves to any hot political topic. And in this instance, you get these people forming these organizations and they get behind these grassroots movements. Well, 
I'm appreciative of that, and that's exactly the kind of people we need. The downside to that is those people don't have the same things to lose as people like you and I. And so therefore, they would be more than willing to uh, negotiate and concede to some of these things that people who actually use marijuana would never agree to. And the downside to that is, and Measure 80 showed this, is there's a very big, strong divide in Oregon amongst activists. Activists, activist groups, it's not, there's no cohesion at all. And from somebody who is now an Oregonian, I wasn't born here, but I've lived here for seven years and I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. This is my permanent home, I will die here. I find it sad that the only way that this can get done is by political activists and out-of-state funders who have nothing at stake in this entire fight. Some of these people, I'm convinced, don't even use marijuana. And while it's great that we have their you know, intellect and their education behind this matter, when they're at the forefront, they're going to be more than willing to make concessions that people like us would never make. And a lot of the arguments that I saw in the forums regarding this approach was that, for one, New Approach Oregon did this on their own. There was no you know, activist. One of the things in this uh, st um, quick little story here, it says that it had broad support from the activist community, and, and that's not true. I can tell you very much so that there was not broad support um, from the activist community. There was a lot of questions that people have, and since this has already been filed, nothing can be done about it. There's no debating this. We can't give any input on this. And, you know, part of this, I blame, is for the Oregon activist community of actual marijuana users not coming together and bickering and fighting and everyone's protecting their own little hamlet of the state and their own little territory. And I'm surprised it's taken so long. And then it takes people who really aren't even invested in this to, to, to get it done. And it's sad. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of dysfunctionality uh, in, in the movement, and it's so frustrating to me because I've been at it. This is, I don't know, I lost track of time, but it's somewhere around 20 years. Yeah. And it's so dysfunctional. We have groups that don't won't work with each other. They don't want to work with anybody else because they don't want to deal with anybody else. So you got these little groups, groups, and they complain about other groups that won't work with anybody, but they won't work with anybody either. And that's what we've got here. And now we've got these two initiatives that were filed by Paul Stanford, who again, refuses to work with anybody, pretty much, and does his own thing, uh, which is, uh, you know, I have the highest regard for Paul Stanford, and I sincerely believe that he is, his heart is in the right place. Uh, Absolutely. But at the same time, uh, he doesn't take any input, and so uh, <coughs> he just goes and does his own thing. And so, uh, you always kind of humor me, is, oh, well, which group is it that complains about not, that complaining about groups not working with each other that are working uh, that without anybody else, you know, it's, <laughs> it's it's kind of comical and yet it's kind of, it's awful. It's, it's it's sad too. Uh, <clears throat> several weeks ago, I did have a list of who of some of the people that were working on this, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, generally speaking, the list wasn't too bad. There was one particular person that I really was alarmed at, but but anyway, uh, ACLU had a strong hand in it. Mm -hmm. So which which is which is a good thing, I think. Pretty much, I I, I think I, I think pretty highly of them. But but again, like you're saying, it's just groups working together and that's they got their own little thing and that's the way they go. so now we now so here we are with three initiatives mm -hmm. on the ballot or well two definitely on the gathering and socially this one here that we're speaking of uh that was another thing i was told uh the last word i got was that we'll be gathering signatures monday <clears throat> well okay. that was a week ago today <laughs> <laughs> and i haven't heard of anybody gathering any signatures yet so uh, I, I, you know, I don't know, and these and these amounts of money they're talking about in this article: thirty-two thousand <clears throat> from Progressive Insurance founder Peter Lewis, fifty thousand from the Drug Policy Action, and thirty-eight thousand five hundred in cash contributions from the American Victory Coalition. Uh, those are that's dropping the bucket. I mean, yeah, it sounds like a lot of money, but when you look at the overall uh, thing and how much it's going to really take. Uh, you know, I've heard several hundred thousand dollars estimate. I've heard as high as a million it's going to take to get it on the ballot and to win. So I don't know. That was our problem last last, uh, last election. We had, we had, we we got it on the ballot thanks to Paul Stanford and, he, mm -hmm. and all the money he put behind it. He got it on the ballot, but he was so broke by the time he got it on the ballot, we had no money for campaign. 
We yeah. had no support from basically anybody, especially the state organizations. So we had no campaign, and even with no campaign and no money, we 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 lost it 47 percent, which is a hell of a good showing. <laughs> yeah. Considering all things considered, that is a heck of a showing. But now the polls are showing, according to the Gallup poll, which a couple of weeks ago we read, 68 percent of Americans now are, are yeah. pro legalization. So the pendulum is swinging, and we're definitely going. It's just uh, some of us it just isn't quite fast enough, and it's frustrating when we seem to be. Uh, <clears throat> dragging our feet. That's a term I use all the time, dragging our feet. I mean, here we are, we're down to about eight months of time to gather signatures, and now we've got three initiatives, well, two initiatives, and then the third one on it, pretty close, ready to gather signatures. We've missed the summer, mm -hmm. the prime time for gathering signatures. We've completely missed that. Now we've got eight months, pretty much, of nasty weather uh, and no money. So I don't know, but the money is supposed to be coming, so it may yet. I, you know, I, I don't know. But, and once uh, again, we got activists split up amongst different yeah. initiatives. Oh, yeah. Everyone won't be able to work together. Yeah. And that's the other thing. <clears throat> we have three initiatives. I've gathered some initiatives for, for a lot of years. Gathering signatures for one initiative isn't bad. Gathering signatures for two initiatives, especially when related, eh, that isn't too bad. A little harder, but not too bad. Sometimes it might be even considered efficient because they're both on the same subject. But when you get to be three and above, that starts to be a problem. People get tired of signing. When I signed Initiative 21 and 22 myself, when I got done signing that second initiative, I was tired of signing initiatives. I don't know, I, I wouldn't want to tie, sign the third one. But, yeah. but uh, that's just one of the things that we're, uh, <clears throat> we're faced with. So we're moving forward, as I say, we, I keep thinking we're moving three steps forward and two back, but we're getting moved yeah. forward. <laughs> it's still <laughs> so, progress, yeah. it's going forward, absolutely. You bet. So I appreciate it, Eric. We didn't get to our, uh, again, another story on the Super Bowl and the Normals ad that didn't make it. So we'll be talking about that next week and, and in some other, another sport related uh, topic with uh, hopefully Joseph and, and uh, Eric. So appreciate you coming in, Eric. And uh, Yeah, I love uh, coming down anytime uh, I can. Great. Well, I certainly appreciate it and I value your comment and your insight. So we're going to get out of here. We'll talk to you next week. And uh, remember, free the weed. If you're an adult who enjoys a good beer, there's a similar product you might want to know about. One without all the calories and serious health problems. Less toxic so it doesn't cause hangovers or overdose deaths, and it's not linked to violence or reckless behavior. Marijuana. Less harmful than alcohol, and time to treat it that way. For more information, visit MarijuanaIsSafer.org.